probably would have been better off building one from scratch with billet. If only I had a 5-axis CNC, that would be amazing. Back working on the intake manifold. And I think I have pretty much everything ground down to the point where it's fitting really well. I still definitely have some external things that I want to grind off on the manifold, but as far as the seams where I'm going to have to weld, it seems to be fitting really well. <laughs> now the biggest question is, can I weld it together with my 125 amp 110 plug? I'm not sure if I even want to try. I might try some more scrap material before I go ahead and do that. But I definitely need to do a significant amount of cleaning before I try and weld on the actual intake manifold. I think I'm going to go ahead and pop this thing off hopefully for the last time and maybe clean it for a little while. Maybe in the next week I'll be able to have this thing tacked up to the point where I can pop it off and finish weld it. So sweet. We'll see you guys once it's clean. Well, I got the TIG set up. Um, just gonna try and do one pass each side just to see how much penetration I can get. Excuse the loud cooling fan of the TIG welder. Something is wrong here. Dead giveaway. Dead Charles, giveaway. Charles, thank you very Dead much. Dead giveaway. Yeah, it would help to have the bottle open. I thought I opened it already. Apparently I didn't. Wow, there's no way in hell I'm doing that without a 200 inch machine. No way. I could barely even get that thing tacked. One eternity later. Back out in the garage again. Got some lighting upgrades done this past weekend. So that's sweet, even more light to be able to see what I'm working on. More importantly, got a 220 outlet installed for the welder. I jumped right into doing some testing with some of the scrap that I wasn't able to weld before. Once I got a little bit of heat into it, it, it seemed to work pretty good. Um, thinking that 200 amps might be just enough. Later. So I have no idea where I left off, but I went down a rabbit hole and I tore the truck down, removed the intake manifold. I only have the back half sitting in there because I was doing some research on the distributor mount. I actually got a spare distributor from the junkyard. Had no idea they made plastic ones. I just thought it was that dirty. So learn something new every day. This I think is like perpendicular to the, like the crank center line. Uh, but the new manifold, it's at some funky angle. I, I don't even know. I was actually planning on just machining this off and machining up a block with this kind of hole thread and angle and then welding it on here. A few moments later. Right now, putting it on top of my little space heater to be able to weld get a little temperature into the, the casting 
so that I can weld up. I have a couple holes from um, cleaning the manifold up. There's a little uh, divot right there for the distributor mount bolt, which I made a new one. And whenever I get to mounting that, well, I'll go over how I made that. But over here, there was also some weird big hump for no apparent reason. So I ground that flush and it opened up a hole. So I'm going to have to close that hole up. I already wound up uh, welding in where the map sensor, uh, Edelbrock had like a recessed portion right here with a hole that the map sensor would kind of sit flush against the manifold. So I welded, I welded that up as well. Uh, yeah, and then, and then I think the back of the manifold's done. I, I don't know what else. I, I think I cleaned some stuff up on the front as well, but I'm um, just making a little patch piece to be able to weld up uh, that hole a little bit easier. So I'll weld it from both sides. I'm gonna get into, uh, yeah, finishing up this piece and then welding that in. too bad definitely not my finest welds but filled the holes and then the gouge tried to fill that gouge up my hand slipped goobered the end of the tungsten up so I don't know I think that's good enough for today nice easy day we'll get back at it hopefully uh, tomorrow I can jump back on to getting the distributor mount complete. I'm also potentially going to have to look into getting helium for the welder. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to have to preheat the heck out of this manifold to be able to weld it. So hopefully at least I can get some good tacks while it's bolted to the engine because that's my main concern is to make sure that it's generally well aligned with the heads before I go ahead and weld it. But worst case scenario, I have to send it, you know, take it to a machine shop and get the surfaces cut flat and, you know, perpendicular to one another or whatever. I'm not sure what angle that is. Hey guys, not sure where I left off. I was probably working on cleaning up the manifold, but I think I'm finally to the point where I've cleaned it up enough. I've ground off kind of all the useless, at least to me, uh, points where there were holes and, you know, irrelevant bumps. Uh, and now I think I'm, I'm ready to weld. Um, there's definitely still some, some issues that I'll have to clean up, but I'm going to have to clean up the welds because I want it to look smooth. Uh, once I have the manifold uh, final finish welded, and then I'll do a final cleanup on it. Not sure yet what I'm going to do for the surface finish. I kind of just want to leave it raw aluminum, but I could always go back and powder coat it later. So I think that's what I'm going to at least start with. Also went to the hardware store and picked up uh, some barb fittings and some hose clamps and some correct size hose because I've kind of always had issues with this hose on my Argon um leaking so i picked up the correct size hose for that and i also have a t um, i'm gonna do a mix of argon and helium so that i can get more penetration because this this welder is only a 200 amp welder and i've done some testing and it's really pushing uh the limit of what the welder's capable. This took multiple passes, and this is obviously the thickest portion of the manifold, but it still really wasn't getting as good penetration as I really wanted. But I gotta get this plumbed up so that I'm able to uh, tee into the, the welder, and I'll be able to adjust the mix uh, based on the gas flow of both of 
the regulators. So yeah, let's get this thing uh, plumbed up. Okay, well, I got it all plumbed up. I have the argon teed into the helium. Got a couple chunks of the manifold that I cut off. Cleaned it already with some acetone. And I got the welder set up, so now uh, I'm just gonna basically keep it on 200 amps and try and modulate the pedal. I'm gonna try and initially set it up so that it's like a 50-50 mix, helium, argon. Uh, somewhere between like five and 10 uh, CFH for each, uh, which should be enough. Um, but yeah, if it doesn't work, I'll let you know. If it works, I'll let you know. So that didn't go as well as expected. This is what I've done previously and I'm not positive how I cleaned it but I think I really just went over it with the stainless steel wire brush and a bunch of acetone. I'm not sure how I cut that piece though if I cut it with something else versus these other pieces. Um, but you can see that there's a ton of garbage that's coming up from the weld. So I definitely have some more practicing to do. I do have some more pieces of manifold somewhere around here uh, that I cut out of the middle. Man, I hope I didn't throw those away. Oh, there they are. Found them. So I still have these pieces that I cut out of the center of the upper part. I might actually just turn off the helium um, because these parts are so small. Um, I, I think I can easily with 200 amps get enough heat into them. But I think I'm gonna maybe cut these pieces up into some test samples and try some different cleaning methods. Well, I got a couple pieces cleaned. These ones I did by hand, and these ones I had a wire brush and a drill. I'm not sure if that's actually a stainless wire brush, so I didn't want to do the same thing on both. Uh, but the inside of the manifold is actually pretty significantly dirty. I don't really know what it is, but you can see the color difference. So I'm not sure how well I actually got all that stuff off on my prior tests. So I went a little overboard doing uh, that one by hand, but hopefully this one works and then I'll just be able to do um, the cleaning with uh, the drill and that will be much easier. But I'm gonna try and uh, weld these together now and see if uh, it works. So that didn't go too bad. This piece welded fairly decent. You could still see there's definitely some junk coming up to the surface. Um, and the more amps I put in, it looks like the more that's coming out. So this piece was a little bit thicker. I had to give it a little bit more. And there's you know, some more junk that came up. If I give it a quick wire brush, you know, looks fantastic. So uh, the only other thing is the structural integrity. If this will be thick enough and welded well enough that it will handle, you know, over 20 pounds of boost, who knows? 30 pounds of boost. You never know. So I'll probably wrap it up here. See you later.